place to 500 subscribers special, and this one's gonna be special! What is up guys, it's KikiZilla101 here yet again, and today we are finally going to be doing our 500 Q uh, subscriber Q&A video. Um, really, really excited. Uh, this is going to be super fun. Uh, first off, I do want to just thank you guys so much for 500 subscribers. This is incredible. You guys mean so much to me. Just thank you for everything you guys do for me. It just means the world to me to get 500 subscribers. We're halfway to a thousand. I, I just, I cannot wait for the future. Uh, I do want to just start off this video before we quite get into the Q&A stuff. Give you guys a little bit of an announcement. If some of you guys probably have noticed, some of you haven't, that I have a brand new banner on my channel. Um, and this was made by my good friend Godzilla Fan 40 He did a phenomenal job with the banner. He had drawn that um, and made digital art of it. And I do want to uh, give you guys a little bit of a notice that he is actually doing commissions. I know that there's a lot of people out there who are really interested in getting like profile pictures or banners or anything done. He will do stuff um, like that. Th th this quality image you see right here is about $15. Um, that's how much he would charge for something like this. So if you guys are interested in getting anything um, from him, then please contact him. His contact information will be in the description below. Here's some of his other work that you guys can take a look at right here. I'm just going to have him on the screen right now. Um, that's some of his other work that he's done. Um, obviously, all these have watermarks on them and they're not digitalized, but he digitalizes the art um, for you guys. So. Thank you to the dog barking in the background and ruining the video. Um, so with that out of the way, I do want to finally move on to our actual Q&A section here. <clears throat> oh, also you're probably wondering why the heck am I downstairs? I freaking feel like not sitting up in my baking room and making another one of these videos. So I'm sitting down here because all the kids are at school except one of them. I was hoping all of them would be be at school today so it would be a lot more quiet but uh, you know you take what you can get. Our first question comes from Archosaurus Galore. Um, now they, they actually asked uh, two questions inside this. The first of their two questions is uh, what's your top uh, three favorite herbivores and carnivores? I'm guessing they meant dinosaurs but now that I, 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 like, I, I, I wrote down my notes for the dinosaurs but don't know if they just meant in general. I kind of wish I, 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 I'm just gonna assume you're doing, you're asking dinosaurs, so I will answer it based off that. So my top three favorite carnivores is number one, Eutyrannus, number two, Eutyraptor, number three, Giganotosaurus. Um, those guys have been my uh, top three favorite for years, ever um, since 2015, which, or 2014, somewhere around there when Eutyrannus became my first favorite dinosaur. Then herbivores, first place is Ankylosaurus, second place is Pachyrhinosaurus, and third place is Leonosaurus. Question number two, what is your favorite and least favorite prehistoric animal model from Safari LTD, Collecta, Papo, and Schleich? Um, now I get this question quite a bit in here actually in different forms um, and I'll just I'll just answer it again as I came across it. It was going to be too much of a hassle trying to separate them all. However, I will show you. Now Archosaurus galore, I am assuming when you ask that question you mean like out of the ones that are in my collection um, and not like just in general. Um, I don't even know how I'd start to answer that question, to be honest, if it was just every figure ever. So, out of my collection, I will answer yours. My favorite safari figure inside of my collection is the 2017 Chronosaurus, and my least favorite safari figure in my collection is the 2005 Dodicarus. My favorite collective figure is the 2016 Taurosaurus. My least favorite uh, collective figure is the 2009 Tarbosaurus. My favorite Papo figure is the 2006 Allosaurus. And my least favorite Papo figure is the 2011 Styracosaurus. My favorite Schleich figure is the 2018 Schleich Setacosaurus. And my least favorite Schleich figure is the 2004 Dinosuchus. Now while we're up here, let's move on to our second question, which comes from Billy Goat. 
and he asks, how in scale is the older Safari Brown Rex with the Safari Feathered Rex from a Safari also? I'm going to show you. So here is the older Safari Brown Rex, which is a very underrated figure in my opinion, and the Safari Feathered Tyrannosaurus. Let's get a better angle. Here you go with them right next to each other on the little review table here. Um, as you can see, this guy is about half, if not less than half the size of the feathered Tyrannosaurus, but I think that they go along with each other not too bad considering that one's feathered and one is not. But yeah, there you go. That is how they size up to each other. All right, and we have one more question from Billy Goat. His, quest his other question is, Loki, stop chewing on the frickin' tripod. Anyways, the, the Billy Goat's second question is, Question for the Q&A. If Papo, Safari, LTD, Schleich, and Collecta stop making and selling figures, what would you do? That is a good question. Well, at first, I'd be pretty disappointed that they weren't making figures anymore, and I might uh, go through a pretty big, like, anger spree, I guess, where I'd be mad that they just stopped making figures, and I wouldn't do anything with my stuff for a while. But after I recover, I'm guessing that I would just go back to buying any of the figures that they had already made that I don't have yet, um, like the old Carnegie stuff, the old Safari, like just the Safari stuff I don't have yet, and Collecta and Schleich and Papo stuff that I don't have yet that I want. And then, uh, as I want to get more fi figures, I would just move on to companies like Vite, Favorite Co., and PNSO. Our next question comes from Daniel Kosert, uh, who is also known as Gabriel, if I remember correctly. My Q&A question is, what figures would you want of a Triassic animal? This is a very, very cool question. Uh, thank you for sending that one in. This one was pretty tough, um, and you also said, it was a little contradicting here, you said, what, is, what figures do you want of a, of a Triassic animal? Um, so I didn't know if you wanted figures from multiple different companies of a specific animal. I collected a couple different animals that I, from the Triassic that I thought would be really interesting to see. Um, first off, Proterosuchus I think would be awesome to get a figure from. I really, really love to see a figure from like Safari or Collecta. Um, a Tanistrophius, like a, a redone Tanistrophius would be really cool. Um, and then either an Eoparcaria or an Eoraptor, either one of those. They're both kind of very similar in some ways. And I think either one of those would be very unique. Gabriel also sent in another question. He said, to be honest, I, I just want to see all of the weird stuff in the Godzilla collection, like that one with the really long neck. Uh, okay, I'll show you. Alright, I'm up on my bed now, um, so I'm just going to give you kind of like a quick rundown. You can kind of look at the stuff. I'm not really making a full-blown video on this. Um, but here is my bigger Godzilla stuff up on, on top of the shelf here. I just have some of my deodorant stuff so Loki doesn't knock it off my bed because he sleeps up here with me. And some of my older uh, dinosaur figures. I don't know where the other old T-Rex went. And uh, little band-aids, which are just there for fun uh, because my friend Cesar gave them to me. Then we have my Godzilla shelf, which is just literally, I mean my Godzilla shelf. It just, it's just a bunch of Godzillas. Um, so that's, that's pretty cool. Um, and then we have all my Godzilla adversa adversaries and allies on this shelf, um, and a Gamma character. Um, so then right below us we have uh, my films and stuff, and other stuff jammed back there. We have my Batra figure, who I have not brought out of the box. He's still back in there. Um, the, the, I have videos of him on the channel if you want to see him. And my Jurassic World Monopoly game is right there. And then we have my Jurassic World gift set with the Jurassic World um, film right there. And my Jurassic World uh, little matchbox car. Anyways, this is my Godzilla collection. So I hope that made you happy. Oh, I have Godzilla posters up there too that are just aren't up. Um, I'm guessing you said that this is the one you wanted to see, the long neck one. Which I hope that makes you happy. I also have this one. So, weird Godzilla stuff. Our next question is from dbback13 who asks, how many do you have? I know, it doesn't sound too correct, but I did end up asking him and uh, I checked, uh, he was asking how many figures I have, um, and so like how many I have on my shelf. R I have roughly 169 figures up on that shelf from that uh, collection video. 
I, I may have missed one, so give or take a few, because I only, I did it really roughly last night, and it's it's a pain in the butt to count them all. So, and that's also not including minis, like little Collect-A-Human or any of the tube stuff, or I don't even know if I counted the, the PNSO little baby stuff, um, uh, but I, I might have done that, but it, not the minis or anything like that. Um, besides those, so it's 169 figures, give or take a few. Uh, our next question comes from Deberionix Hunter, uh, slash slash heavy claw slash slash. He gives us four questions. First question is, what is the meaning of life? Well, I think the, the meaning of life is very different for everybody, for, but for me, the meaning of life is happiness and doing what you love with who you love. And so I think everybody has a different meaning for the meaning of life, and you just have to find that out for yourself and really strive for that. His second question is, what is 9 plus 10? That is 19. Uh, did you play Club Penguin? Yes, I actually did. Uh, back when I was like around 10, um, so this was about 2010. I actually did play Club Penguin, Club Penguin with my sister and my uh, friend Jackson, and with my friend Jackson. I did play with my uh, sister and my friend Jackson, and so we just played that a bunch. It was actually pretty cool. It was a pretty cool game. It was not not too bad, not too bad. I wasn't a big fan of it, but it was just it was just kind of a fun pastime to do, like you know, kind of like play with people play Slither or you just kind of jump on and you did it. I haven't played it in since then though. I only played it that year for like a couple months. Sorry, my mom had just got back, and uh, so I couldn't really hear anything. We're just gonna do this outside now. Back to this. Number four, he asks, did you ever buy, consider buying Schleich Acro? Uh, and the answer to that is never. Uh, simply never, because I've always disliked Schleich immensely, probably a little bit too much. I've never given them quite enough uh, credit for some of their better stuff. Um, besides their Dunkley Osseus, I did give them credit for that one. So I've, I've always really hated on Schleich, and when I saw that Acro, I mean, personally, it does not rub me off as Schleich's worst figure. Not even freaking close, in my opinion. Um, I think Schleich has made some god-awful uh, stuff, like their Therizinosaurus is just is hideous. Anyways, that's just my opinion, but I've never considered getting the Schleich Acro. I just, I, I never have wanted Schleich stuff ever. I've, uh, the only Schleich figures I've ever purchased in my entire life are the, um, the 2018 Trike and the Stock Source. Oh, and technically I did get the um, old, uh, or the newer, like, yellow uh, Stegosaurus. No, I technically got that one, so. Uh, but those are the only one. All right, so our next question is by Derpy Gold, the community frick, uh, and he asks this really good question: Why did you start YouTube? That is an excellent question. I was inspired by um, other Godzilla uh, fans who had made videos just doing reviews about the figures and stuff like Ultraman Kronos and Elbros Films and stuff. Um, if any of you guys know who those guys are, um, they had some pretty cool videos going for the time that really made me want to. Um, make videos of my own, uh, but inevitably, like the biggest inspiration to me and in one making me want to make really good quality videos and just be as good as I could was actually Goji Fan 93. He was really new at the time, and I was actually one of his first few sub first, like first subscribers, um, which is pretty cool. But I've been around uh, watching him for a really long time, and now we're great friends, so it's really awesome. That that kind of just comes full circle. Yeah, he's a fantastic guy, and. Uh, Definitely, it would have to be the early uh, Godzilla stuff like that uh, that got me to start YouTube. All right, our next question comes from Diego Roa. I have a question. How did you find the DinoTube community? This is another good question. I actually started out by watching Matthew Dinosaur King. Um, he had his reviews up probably the earliest. I, ha I had watched him a lot. Um, and then Spino Dude Reviews came onto the scene and I watched him a bunch. And then I just slowly transitioned. I think my friend Cesar, uh, aka Godzilla Fan 40, was actually the person to introduce me to Bionicle Saurus um, with the Dinosaur Island. Um, but other than that, I have been in the dinosaur community for a really long time in terms of like viewing because I've been watching Matthew Dinosaur King and Spino Dude Reviews since they both started their channels. Um, and I, actually, a little fun fact. I actually am on, I've been on YouTube longer than Matthew the Dinosaur King, which I, I just found out um, the other day when I was looking at to see when he was actually got onto YouTube, and I found that quite interesting that I've actually been on YouTube longer than he has. Our next question comes from DinoFan, 
What is your favorite dinosaur? My favorite dinosaur is Utyrannus, but lately I've been kind of going through an Allosaurus phase where Allosaurus has kind of put Utyrannus in check and I'm just really infatuated with Allosaurus right now. Loki, don't knock over my camera. Next up is Dino Man, and Dino Man has <laughs> a few questions for us. All right, so number one, dogs versus cats versus lizard versus chickens versus fish, who wins? First off, I think the fish and the lizard lose just because even though they're cool, there's only one of each of those guys. Um, well, I guess the fish, there could be multiple of them. Never mind. That could be plural. But the lizard definitely loses. There's only one of the lizard. Uh, there's multiple cats, there's multiple dogs, there's multiple chickens, uh, possibly multiple fish. I'm going to say chickens, though. I think that chickens would win because dinosaurs are the most versatile with um, water and land, and also they're just. They're just, they're just cool, and they also have numbers, so they have numbers over the lizards. So I'm just gonna say chickens. Number two, what is the heaviest figure you own, and how much does it weigh? It's the Safari Carnegie Brachiosaurus. I was going to weigh it for you, but I couldn't find our scale that we used to weigh the puppies when we got them, and I was too lazy to go digging for it, so sorry, not gonna tell you how much it weighs. And number three, what is the lightest figure you own, and how much does it weigh? The lightest figure I own would have to be some safari tube dinosaur that I have. Number four, if you were stranded on a, de a deserted island and you could only take one thing, what would you take? Uh, my house. Number five, if you were reaching for the banana tree and tripped over the microwave, how would this affect the overall population of Safari 2019 Carnotaurus? Now this is a very interesting question, um, but it's a pretty simple answer. Um, if I were reaching for the banana tree and I tripped over the microwave, I'd be pretty irritated and pretty angry, so I'd probably take out all my rage on all the Carnotauruses and they'd probably just like almost go entirely extinct, like probably at least 98% of them would go extinct. Alright, J212Films asks, what is the most underrated series? This is a good question, this is a good question. In my opinion, Jurassic World Misfits. Um, this was a pretty tough one because, yet again, I don't really watch too many um, like shows of like smaller channels and stuff. Um, but dang, Jurassic World Mis Misfits from Camosaurus is so under-recognized and not enough people are watching it. And that is a hilarious show. I think it's the most hilarious show that Camosaurus has ever made. And uh, Billy the Dimension Opera gets way more attention than uh, Jurassic World Misfits does. So I definitely think Jurassic World Misfits is the most underrated series.